Uh, we host weekly tournaments for bronze all the way up to masters in several different divisions, both on the North American server and the European server. So no matter what race you are, no matter what league you are, we have a tournament for you. And of course, SCV Rush would like to thank Winner for partnering with us to bring you the Winner Weekly. So thanks a bunch, man. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm enjoying myself right here. We're almost ready to go in the final match. Let's get this started. Check that accept button. What? I don't have a button. Wait, who are we talking to? Me? You didn't, you didn't get the request? No, it's... Oh, okay. It was bugged out for a second. Battle.net was being Battle.net. So. Uh, so let's. Oh, this guy's back again, Winter. Who is it? Aaron Kale. Okay, okay, okay. WCS. All right. He made it to the finals. He did make it to the finals. So it's. Wait, I don't remember what happened. What happened before? Is it PVP? It's going. I think it's going to be PVP. Yeah. All right. Um, let's get our rock paper scissors out. Yeah. PV, uh, Protoss confirmed him. Bump. You heard it here first time. Oh, yeah, I played Empire Earth too. Someone pointed that out in the chat. I actually played Empire Earth more than I played Age of Empires. Empire Earth was legit. That's when I first learned in an RTS you should make more than one of one type of production building in order to make more units. Yeah, it took me a while. It was like okay, it was like four months into playing too. I was like eleven, okay? Yeah, well, like so, nine actually. It was like two thousand. Oh, oh, oh. How old was All I? Right, yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. Can we start? We good? Can I get a sec? He wants a sec. Okay, one second, guys. Yeah. So, uh, no. When I first started playing StarCraft, I picked Protoss because Void Rays and DTs were really awesome, and so were cannons. So I was your typical bronze Protoss player, cannon rushing his way to victory. Which is funny because you can't actually cannon rush well as a Protoss player. So. The winter. You there, buddy? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, winter's. Well, winter's left us for a minute, I guess. Yeah, I should have stayed in the game. Alright, guys, so we do have a little bit of downtime, so. Do us a favor, go to Twitter. If you have one, you should have one, because our audience is awesome and awesome people have Twitter. Go ahead and look us up uh, at StarCraft Winner and at BrownlingSC2. Click that follow button. You'll get all of our tweets about SCV Rush and any upcoming tournaments that we host. You also get awesome updates about Winter and his streaming schedule, so it's all good. Um, we're going to be waiting here for our final match to start. Both players are ready, but... Uh, uh, Often it is difficult for winter is not to control a complicated sound synthesizer quickly enough. A computer so at this time, any uh, and do any questions quickly. you might have, I'll be happy to answer them in the they chat. Is winter drunk or something? He was drinking Bud Light, so it's a what possibility. But as he mentioned earlier, you'd have to drink a lot of Bud Light to, uh, to actually get drunk because it's yep. not drinking beer it's pretty much water with a little bit of alcohol and he also only he's only going on four hours sleep so so yeah four hours of sleep plus bud light equals drunk winter somebody throw up the winter life choices oh my god did i make some bad life choices i've done that before I... from what i've heard oh, speaking of life choices else all right so jackson versus heron kill are you ready to go? Ready? I don't eat Hot Pockets. If I had Hot Pockets, I, I should have gotten Hot Pockets. I went to Walmart today. Now he's just rubbing it in. That's kind of BM, actually. I should ban this guy from my tournaments. Alright. Looks like we're ready to go. PvP, the finals! Have oh begun. my god, now we're waiting for we're trying to wait. Wait, quit! Panic! I quit! I quit! It's not stopping! It's not stopping! I literally pressed the quit button, it wouldn't, like, leave the lobby. <laughs> uh. Life choices. You had a chance. I'm game gonna- started. I'll pause the second the game starts. I'll be the one to pause. Get wrecked. Game pause. What? Oh, shit, he beat me! Damn. Alright, like All right, so go. we can, uh, uh, as we're waiting for our players to be ready and uh, continue. Oh, 
Never mind. They are continuing. Okay. Okay. Winter, I think it's I think it's fairly appropriate that you introduce us for the final. Since one of these lucky players you will have quote unquote intimate coaching with. All right. In the top right hand corner it is from Clan W R, which I still haven't checked what the name of that clan is. In the blue, it's gonna be Heron Kill. His opponent. In the bottom right hand corner, looking pretty dominant in the previous match. We'll see if he continue his dominance here today in the finals. And hopefully not too dominant so he can actually benefit from the coaching, but I guarantee you uh, he could use some coaching. It is Jackson, the orange Protoss player. There's definitely things to improve upon uh, for both these players. We watched both these players at some point today, I believe, right? We watched Jackson in the last match, and we watched at least one match of Heron Kill, I do believe. Yeah, yeah, we watched Heron Kill before, and both players, it's so good to see again, you know? Um, it's always fun to pick up a, you know, a game with one of these players and then see them in the finals. It kind of brings everything. It brings closure to the tournament. So, um, obviously here we're on a four-player map, so they will have to scan. Or I'm sorry, they will have to scan. They will have to, that would be pretty imba if they could scan. They will have to actually go out and scout with a probe to see where their opponent is. Now, recently, they disabled horizontal spawns, eliminating the need to search for that position. So. It can be a no cross more tank or... drops on people's no naturals. More tank drops. If only overgrowth didn't exist. <laughs> actually, overgrowth isn't nearly as bad because you don't have to take down rocks in order to actually engage the tanks. Um, but on this map, yeah, that was pretty. It. I, I did like. I actually had a high win rate on this map because what I would do is go very quick three hatch, uh, and then as people would try to come through the rocks, something like Mech Terrans or Protoss players. I'd already have maxed out on roaches. I just went straight roaches because you can come in from two different angles. Kind of use it kind of like King Sejong Station with a quarter of the rush distance. Uh, which is extremely strong when you have 200 roaches. Well, 200, 200 roaches at like the 11 minute mark. But uh, yeah, the map, you just can't play the way you want to play in those close positions. Which... I don't like it on a four-player map. If there was a two-player map that was kind of like that, uh, I think there should be some maps out there. They should be vetoable. Maybe in a best of seven or something, they have to come up. But I like I like the idea of maps that force a completely different play style. But on a four-player map, that's already a four-player map, which is a completely different play style than a two-player map. Especially in mere matchups like ZvZ and PvP, where the build orders are so important. I don't like adding that double factor in, where not so only can you not scout them, but it kind of screws up the entire style of play as well. So I want you to go ahead and take a look at the probe of Heron Kill, which has gone all the way to the cross spawn, all the way back to the uh, horizontal spawn. No, does he? I don't think he knows. <laughs> Pretty sure he doesn't yeah, know I... that it's not uh, no close spawns. So no, this is a. Uh... Now he will, by process of elimination, know where his opponent is. But uh, he found out a little bit late. He did. All right. He's sending another- I like how he's like interchanging the probes. He's like, well this probe was useless, so I'm sending a different one. <laughs> like, that's right. You're, and they have a probe done. kiss in the middle of the map. Just a tap on the cheek. Alright. Let's not get too crazy. No fraternizing with the enemy right now. Yeah, now we see our first deviation from builds. Uh, Jackson showing that he likes to go for a very quick expansion. This is Give not me DTs. quite as quick. Give me the DTs, baby. Yeah, this I think is it's not gonna go quite blank as here, fast but... as uh, last match, but relatively fast. Um, and uh, Heron Kill opting for three gates. Hmm. Yeah. On honestly, is there a Mothership Core out yet? Yeah, there's a Mothership Core. So that Mothership Core, by the time Blink hits, will have about 170 energy, which is enough if he uh, he can Photon Overcharge probably both of his next side by the time it becomes relevant. As the Blink finishes, there will be about... 9 to 12 stalkers, depending on his warpins, out on the map, which is enough to easily force a photon overcharge, especially when he's going for a stargate off of one gate right now. I like how he's made three units off of this first gateway. He knows he's vulnerable. The photon overcharge will kind of close a little bit of that gap in defenses that he does have, but blink stalkers don't care that much for normal terrain obstacles, obviously. So it's going to come down to can he snipe the mothership core in time or not, because otherwise I think this blink attack might be enough to do critical damage or perhaps just end the game as it comes out. Yeah, and the Mothership Core now moving out 
closer to the uh, expansion here. He can go ahead and get the photon overcharge, and his units need to move out as well. I'm afraid that if he moves out with just the mothership core, target the mothership core with the photon overcharge. No, he's not. He's not targeting. So this means he can blink into the main now. And how much energy is on that mothership core? Not enough. He's no, only got 50. Enough. It's another minute no. and a half until he can have enough for another photon overcharge. Honestly, I'd love to see a blink in, blink into the main, but I understand how he's waiting it out. The thing is, there's only going to be like a 10 to 15 second window, and there's already a void ray out. There's about a 10 second window, maybe 20 second window after this photon overcharge finishes. Oh, wow. Action. Yeah, he's, just gonna go he's going for it. for it. He can target down the hatch, but there's a void ray that will have prismatic alignment. He can target down the stalkers insanely quick. And he's just fighting through the Photon Overcharge, which is almost unnecessary, but... Remember, the Photon Overcharge is only the damage output of a single cannon, uh, or about two Stalkers, if you can think about it that way. So, well, he it's not that big of a deal. Off the, uh, base here, and this leaves, uh, Jackson this is... extremely uncomfortable. You know, he lost well, his base. Well, at this point, he's making the most Stalker-killing army- Oh, no, no, no! Force Field! There, nice. Oh, he listened. Don't, don't use a time warp yet. Oh my god. Oh, this is an overcommittal. He could turn with the prismatic alignment and kill this army. He needs to blink out. He has to get out. This is actually an overextension on parent kill right now. He should have gone back and expanded as soon as he killed that Nexus. But he's actually going to pick up a few extra probes for the cost. And that's going to put him ahead in the probe count right as he kills his probes. Yeah, we're the, even the, right the, now. 23 to 23. Yeah, the decision he has to make now is, does he continue to make bleak stalkers, and does he continue to apply pressure, he or does he just go back home in macro? He has to expand, and he has to go yeah. for charge lots right now. So he's making the correct decision here, knowing that... It was a little bit rate, late. He should, have, yeah. he should have backed off without losing four or five stalkers, but this is such a scary army for... Heron Kill is actually on the back foot right now. He has to back off. This is a mortal void ray. <laughs> You can't fight that. If there's any composition in PvP, you cannot fight with Stalkers. You can fight... If there were three Colossus, it'd be easier to fight than this army right now. Because these Immortals, combined with the Charged Void Rays, there's no chance that the Stalkers can fight. He needs Archons, which don't take extra damage either from Void Rays or from Immortals. And they tank a lot, and he also needs Charge Lots for the same reasons. So... Right, well, Jackson here, it looks like, is just going to go for the one base all in. He does, he's not making any more probes. He has not retaken his expansion. So, he's going to have an opportunity to attack, but if this base for Heron Kill gets up and he's able to chrono out some probes, he may find himself in a difficult position. Oh, so he this is army's still ahead. so scary, though. I... Yeah, he's going to have, he's gonna have to move out now. Three and, Immortals, uh, one shot. Is. One shot stalkers, by the way. It takes three immortal shots to kill a stalker. Three immortals will literally be killing a stalker with every volley. There are force fields that are in the main. I don't know why the sentries are in the main. I guess he's looking for war prisms, but he has a photon. He has two photon overcharges, which are huge right now. He's got these two bases. This is a good engagement angle. It takes about three to four, vo uh, three to four force fields to choke off this natural. He can hold this attack, but if he misses the force fields, he doesn't use guardian shield. He can easily get run over by this army. He can literally run over. It won't even be remotely close if he misses the force. All right, good target the fire. The first time. Coming out so far, the blink back. You need to force field the immortals out. He needs to force field the immortals out. Otherwise, yeah, this is not going to be enough, and he's going to have to back where's up. Where's the Where's the overcharge? Expansion. There's no overcharge, and that's what I meant by running over. He killed three void rays, but there's still three immortals on the ground, well, which is three too many. Yeah, the Void Ray is targeted down the Mothership Core before it was able to get the Photon Overcharge out. So, a little bit of a mistake by Heron Kill. He will force field off the ramp, but at this point, this army is just too big. And uh, Nexus it will almost be completed. This is the Dark uh, Shrine timing. I think Heron Kill is going to realize a Dark Shrine hap, uh, is his best option in just another couple seconds here. Absolutely. He needs to create balance in this game. Otherwise, he will find himself losing this first match um jackson here uh still building probes so he will be able to partially set his mineral line as this finishes and he does have the better army still so he knows he's safe unlike heron kill who retreated with a worse army composition and because of it had his base sniped so yeah at this point it's not even about how many probes you have but about how many mineral patches 
because right now both players are mining out of their main, but Heron Kill does not have a natural to retreat to. He doesn't have DTs, he doesn't have Archons, he should have gone for the charge I feel at some point here in order to get on top of those immortals, because I doubt he's gonna be microing his immortals onto the stalkers, but Heron Kill has found himself this army is still nearly impossible for Heron Kill to kill. I think like two DTs coming in while he doesn't have an observer, forcing him back and then sniping the Nexus might be enough. He's gonna try something with the Blink Stalkers. He can use Hallucinate to get up to the high ground, but there's no expansion follow-up. There's nothing. He has 12 Stalkers against 4 Immortals and 3 Void Rage with a Mothership Core and enough energy to double overcharge. This is not yeah, gonna work. This is, there's no way that... No. It, no. That's my answer. No. <laughs> I say yeah, no. If, yeah, there's, uh, you know... I can't even think of him being able to break this with the perfect, uh, you know, perfect micro here. The blink is great and all, and is useful, and will keep his stalkers alive a little bit longer, no. especially if he gets the guardian shield up, no. but it's not going to be enough to break this army. My answer is no. And I, I mean, I, I applaud the effort. He had a good attack here, he just overextended a little bit too much. He's going to pick off one immortal, targeting down a second. The blink micro is actually not that bad right now, but... That is three Immortals and three Charged Void Rays of the Photon Overcharge, and the answer is no. Yeah, and he's still getting out more And there's still he's a still charge. The he's so, doing I mean, a lot more than he, I thought he would, to be honest. He's down, he's still, he's picked off two Immortals so far, but... Yeah, that's that's the appropriate response Game to the situation. Replay the Blink save. Micro was pretty good for, you know, for what it was for a gold player, but it was not enough to beat uh, four Immortals and three Void Rays, especially with more out on the way. He did a great job uh, sniping two of the Immortals, but ultimately just did not have the damage to power through the natural expansion. But that's okay, because this is the best two out of three, so Heron Kill has an opportunity to bring it back. You know? I so do. we'll have to see. We'll actually, have to see. I, I mean, it makes sense, but Heron Kill actually had more APM than Jax in that game. Of course, microing Blink Stalkers and being more mobile on the map will induce that, but I've noticed Jackson has a pretty low APM compared to uh, most of the players we've seen so far, even in Gold League, but he's using that APM, as, as cliche as it sounds, he's using it just that much more effectively. So, uh, Congrats to him. He knew what he needed to do, pretty much. He might not be as fast, just like how a lot of players say when you get older, like, for example, Pult is one of the lowest APM pro players out there. But when you think of a player who makes be the best decisions in the entire game, I think Pult is very near the top of that list. Uh, he has about 200 APM in game. Compare that to someone like Tasia, who regularly tops out over 300, but they have about the same results, and Pult actually beats Tasia on a regular basis. So, APM isn't everything, guys. No, it is not. And, you know, I kind of agree with that, you know? Um, I'm seeing a lot of, you know, these gold players under 30, 140 APM, you know, and I'm, I'm, I don't think you can speak to this because of from, you know, your IPM, your APM is crazy, but for me, you know, Diamond League, uh, I only had like 110 APM and I was beating people with like 200, you know, it's not really There's how much APM spam going you have. It's... Honestly, a lot of players, a lot of players, especially I see in the chat a lot, overestimate how much top level players care about their APM honestly I guarantee you no one in Masters cares about APM like I don't care if my opponent had I mean I'll be impressed it's like oh it's a Terran with 300 APM who outplayed me it's like wow he's actually using it but it's not like he had more APM so I feel like he's better despite what happened in the game for example APM doesn't matter it's just kind of a side effect of what happened in the game it's much once you get to the higher leagues it's a lot more about feeling like your opponent is playing faster than you a lot more than if they're actually having more APM because that doesn't matter what matters is what they're doing with what they have uh, and the number is really not that critical to it I guess you could say Jackson yeah. or Terran <laughs> figure it out go full Scarlet switch to Protoss alright there we go <laughs> he even got he actually leveled up in that last game too he went from level 9 to level 10 so congratulations to Jackson <laughs> Looks like we're about ready to go. Jackson is one game away from winning a nice, tasty, juicy, I think is how we're describing it, coaching session with myself. Yes, and Heron Kill needs two games session. to bring it back. I'm going to be giving out other free coachings, guys, not just from the tournament, but this is the most regular way to get a hold of that. So. 
game started. And this will be another PvP, of course, same players as we are on the finals on merry-go-round. So it's interesting, um, you know, a lot of casters discuss how the map looks. Um, you know, just because different races will do different things on different maps. But I feel like, you know, in bronze, silver, gold, again, as we've been saying before, if you look at the map, you're really overanalyzing players here need to be focusing on the macro. Yeah. And I think that you would agree that the map at this level well, is almost irrelevant. Not the quite. only the only time where I say don't focus on the macro is in matchups like PvP. PvP okay. is probably the one matchup where spending your money is not as important as spending it on the right things. Like we saw last game that Jackson, he didn't have as much production as he could have. He wasn't spending his money particularly efficiently. But he was spending it on absolutely the right units he could have at the time. He lost his natural even, but he just made immortals, he made void rays, and Heron Kill did not adapt. He did not evolve. He did not zerg his way out of that situation, and that is why he lost. If he had adapted into Archons or Immortals himself or Charge Lots or something, maybe. But he tried to force the Blink Stalkers, and forcing... You can't fit a round peg into a square hole, and Blink Stalkers... As mobile as they are, can't slip their way into that. And that's why Heron killed the last game. Uh, was not able to pull it out. Well, so far, Jackson has displayed absolute dominance in this tournament. So, Heron kill has his work cut out for him to bring the series back 1-1. One, one. Um, with SCB Rush tournaments, folks, uh, this is a best 2 out of 3, even though it's the finals. So, this is uh, Heron kill's one chance to bring it back. If he loses here... Uh, his opponent, Jackson, will be taking home some very juicy winter coaching, so... Um, this is do or die time. Literally, at this point, if he loses this game, the tournament is over. There's a maximum of two more games left, this is half of them. And Jackson going for the double three in gas. Chrono boost all over the probes, but he's actually adding the three in gas before... ...his cyber core has begun. This means as the Cyber Core finishes, he's going to easily have enough for a Mothership Core, Warp Gate, as well as a Tech Building. And we'll see if he chooses to get a Sentry or go for an Expansion once again. I feel like he could have held his Expansion, but I really liked the decision last game when he saw the Blink Stalker army moving in. Don't risk your Immortals. Don't risk your Void Rays. He knows he had a better army. He lost some probes, but in the long run, he had the better unit composition. And that's what won in the game. The unit composition. A lot more than his economy. So... We'll have to see, but once again, I think we'll see him going for some heavy tech, whether it's for a Nexus and then following up with the tech building, uh, or just straight up for like a Stargate or a Twilight Council, which, now either or at this point. Yeah, we've seen a lot of macro play out of Jackson, opting to go for that second base around five minutes. I would actually like to see him kind of switch it up, you know, because uh, we've already seen him on stream, we've already recognized how he plays. So to see something out of him like a four gate would be probably catch his opponent off guard. Um, so that would be interesting to see. Of course, with his opponent not yet taking his expansion, that would be a very risky move. But hey, what is StarCraft without a little risk? It would just be chess. I think. It would just be chess. Yes. Honestly, better, I, I've contemplated graphics. in the past like a show match or something like that. You know, a husky has his Ember League mod and stuff like that. Maybe a mod where you could see what your opponent is doing for like the first six minutes of the game or something like that. I think that'd be pretty interesting. It would I probably think only would work just in like everybody expand. <laughs> everybody would just expand at all times. They'd have defenses up. That's what I'm saying. Like I think the player, if if you had map hacks effectively for like the first six minutes of the game, I don't think Pult would ever lose a tournament. Like <laughs> ever. Okay. Okay. What if it was like intermittent map hacks? Like that'd you know be interesting. How it, you mean scans? Yeah, like, is what you're saying. Yeah, essentially, but I mean, like, I both players, like, their bases automatically get scanned, like, every three minutes or something. So you have to be like, okay, I have a window, I have to go now. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, that's pretty much what scouting boils down to, though. Scouting is just trying to figure out, I, I like, StarCraft would not work like StarCraft works if players knew what their opponents were doing. I wouldn't want that to be the case because oh, the not. art of actually scouting and intuiting and reading what your opponent is doing is a huge part of it. I mean, obviously with chess, uh, you have your map hacks, but StarCraft doesn't need to be... Like, when I describe StarCraft to other people, I know you were talking about how Artosis does it, uh, but when I describe StarCraft to other people, to people who haven't really ever played an RTS game or even really played video games, imagine chess 
where both players can keep remaking pieces. Yeah, and that's I mean, that's much. how you would describe it to somebody who's obviously not played StarCraft. I think the point that Artosis was trying to make was just, yeah. he was describing it to StarCraft players, yeah. you know? I mean, that, that's your basic... I, I like StarCraft where you can keep remaking pieces, and you use your pieces to get more pieces, if that makes uh -oh, sense. Uh-oh, Jackson is doing exactly what I hope oh, he would. The void He's rays. changing it up. That's it will two. be moving out. That's two Void Rays. That is at least like eight to nine Stalker kills of damage if he has even a couple units to tank. Oh my god, that's so much damage. Yeah, so Jackson oh. here putting his proxy pile on Late. down. He okay. will be going one He has one a base. Photon Overcharge, but there's only... T okay, there's two gateways to back it up. Oh, here, uh, Heron kill. He's supply blocked right now. The pylons, he doesn't have a pylon in production. He can't make any more units. He only has four stalkers, a sentry, and a photon overcharge. That's it. Well, Against three stalkers, down. six, six zealots. That will tank all of the overcharge damage. Oh, God. This might be yeah, it right here. Yeah, this, this might be Jackson's ticket. Oh. You know, oh, one God. thing we haven't heard on the tournament is, oh, buddy. Oh buddy, he could, he could, no, you gotta go, 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 forward, and he's doing it, there's an immortal out, go, this is the one way, I think, at this point, that Heron Kill could defend, he's still supply blocked, he's still at 60 over 60, one pound pin, no, Void Ray, so ambitious, and, no, wrong way, okay, it will escape in time, with nothing yeah. but shield damage, and this four still looks very scary from Jackson. He has quite a few zealots, a few. No, no, no! He just lost his second photon overcharge. He just lost his opportunity of second photon overcharge, which means he's probably lost his opportunity of defending this attack. Oh, let's look at the unit counts: three void rays, nine zealots. I like the heavy zealot composition because he knows the void rays are the real damage dealers. The zealots are in front to tank. The void rays will not fall when the zealots still stand. Right now, Heron Kill, he cannot hold. He cannot maintain if these Zealots are still in the game. Oh, he, yeah, he needs to move forward. No charge being used yet. He only has two prismatic alignments, but that's more than enough. The hardened shields have fallen. The Stalkers are forced to retreat. The J Jackson's Protoss army is moving forward. It looks like one Void Ray gonna try to be targeted down, but at what cost? And the cost is going to be almost every single one of these last Stalkers. And the Zealots moving their way through, rampaging through the final... Tidbits of army is exactly how I would describe it from Heron Kill. GG, congrats. Thank you for hosting SCB Rush. Thank you, Brown Lang, once again. I think Heron Kill is appreciative as well. But Jackson, going to Game take ended. the win in Winter right, Weekly in number replay, one. Save. Absolutely. And Jackson played great. He changed things up. He, you know, like you said, there's room for improvement. You were talking about that intuitive play in StarCraft, knowing when you can attack in. Um, he had opportunities to end the game a little bit earlier, but ultimately, uh, you know, the result was the same. He won the tournament, and he will win some very juicy winter coaching.